Hello, and thank you for joining us for our second um, DCARE Wellness webinar series. Um, again, my name is David. I work as the Health Promotion Manager for DCARE. And what we're going to talk about today is what we call the sugar connection. So we're going to you kind of look at the media and um, social media without seeing something about sugar within the last few years. And there's a lot of propaganda that exists around it. So again, in these troubling symptoms with COVID-19 and everything that's going on, a lot of us are working remotely and it's really important I think to focus on diet and just to be a little bit more aware of um, sugar and what it's doing to our systems. Again as a company um, we are DCARE and um, we do dental benefits to close to, in close to 500 organizations across Ireland. We also do wellness programs and we train in workplace well-being so we, um, we have a kind of a holistic offering with, with, with DCARE. Um, again, these two slides that I do always include in a lot of my presentations, um, biomedical model to health, again, looking at health as the absence of disease, we get sick, we're kind of treated and we come out cured. It kind of ignores the, the kind of, looks at the biological, ignores the environmental, psychological and, um, you know, the whole kind of, the, the social kind of things that really, really, really do affect our health. Again, this model, I always recommend it. It's great for using for wellness strategies in your workplace well-being for, for your company. It looks at uh, health as a very layered approach where we're living, where we're growing, where we're working, right out to that policy layer, that last layer you see there in the gray. And then um, by a top-down approach, policy levels, when, when we talk about health and workplace health and well-being. I suppose my own background is dental and I have an MA in health promotion and um, particularly with, with a strong interest in, in workplace health promotion and um, the area that I worked in for the last seven years. Um, I, my, from my dental background, I would say to you that the mouth is the gateway to the body. Sometimes we um, kind of, there is a disconnect between the body and the, and the, the face and neck. And there's over 120 disorders that manifest and can be diagnosed in the body, in the mouth, before they actually um, manifest anywhere else. Things like diabetes type 2, HIV, could all be kind of spotted within the mouth before they show up anywhere in the body. So our wellness programs, and what I'm going to talk about today is we encompass the head and the neck and um, well-being, not, not just the body. I suppose to look at the blue box there, what we want to talk about is non-communicable diseases. So years ago, there was a lot of communicable diseases causing high mortality rates, things like TB, all of those different things. Fast forward onto 2020, and what we're really seeing is adult chronic disease causing issues with quality of life and causing issues with um, high mortality rates, really, causing also issues and sicknesses in the workplace, loss of absenteeism, and really kind of, it, it, it's really hitting home to us with globalization in 2020, that things like cancer, cardiovascular disease, heart disease, stroke, diabetes type two, and obesity contributes to a lot of those. It's causing a hell of a lot of mortality and interfering with morbidity and quality of life. Globally, they cause 60% of deaths uh, worldwide. And in Ireland, Healthy Ireland statistic, we're a smaller country. It's about 87% of deaths globally are caused by those kind of four conditions. Um, what I would say to you as well, if you kind of fast forward there to the purple box that I'm pointing at, um, diet, physical activity, smoking and alcohol, um, those kind of four modifiable risk factors should be included in any health and wellbeing programme. If we can focus and modify the diet, our level of physical activity, our smoking and limit our alcohol intake, we can dramatically reduce getting these non-communicable adult chronic diseases, which are causing so much problems in society at the minute. What I would say to you as well is there is a genetic and there is an epigenetic link to a lot of these conditions, but the majority of deaths that are caused, mortality rates, can actually, uh, the evidence base is there to say that it's down to those modified fibre risk factors. Those small everyday changes that we make in our life really do impact on that. I want to talk to you a little bit about that, that global image that we're seeing there right across the globe. We're seeing, you know, um, it's, 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 it's everywhere. It's not just Ireland. So these kind of adult chronic conditions, the cancers, the diabetes, and, um, you know, the heart disease, they're all affecting us right across the globe. And a lot of the reason for that is things like the globalization of sugar, diet, high processed, high, high salt foods that didn't exist back in the 60s and 70s. What you see there in front of you is, again, the modifiable risk factors, focusing on diet, focusing on alcohol, focusing on tobacco, focusing on stress in our lives, focusing on hygiene. The, the diet, alcohol, tobacco, stress, and hygiene are modifiable risk factors we can change in our life. If we focus on diet, 
not just from a, a dental perspective, we don't, um, you know, we can reduce dental decay, but also diet, we reduce our risk of diabetes type 2 and certain types of cancer. Alcohol, the same, it's not just, um, you know, for our livers, it's for reducing, you know, BMI, healthy weight, diabetes, everything has a knock-on effect right down to the hygiene there that we're seeing with COVID-19 at the minute with infections, like something as simple as the WHO hand washing technique can stop the spread of, along with social distancing, stop the spread of, the, of, the, of that virus and is coming in contact with it. So these are kind of modifiable risk factors that we should be focusing on in wellness programs and in our lives. Too much added sugar doesn't just make us fat, it also makes us sick. And this comes from sugarscience.org, a very highly referenced um, evidence base within the States. We see there the high sugary drink or food, you know, it doesn't just cause as it enters our mouth, the sugar, the streptococcus that, that, that live in our mouth, it causes dental decay. It also contributes to heart disease, diabetes and liver disease. So I want to talk to you a little bit about um, sugar, again, alcohol damages your liver and too much sugar can actually damage your liver because it causes a type of fat um, like non-fatty liver disease, sugar, the fructose has been um, linked to cause that just like alcohol does. So that's how it actually causes damage to our liver. To briefly touch on how sugar, and again, it's not solely, but it's a contributing factor to heart disease. The more sugar, the more processed foods we have in our diet, the more our BMI increases. And what tends to happen is as our BMI increases, our cells, our body mass index, our heart is pumping blood um, to, to more tissues, more capillaries around their body. So it's putting a lot of strain on the heart and it's causing it to become under pressure. Similar with diabetes, what sugar does is we see all these extremities here. When I eat something, so I have an apple or an orange that has fiber in it, it's quite, you know, fiber slowly releases sugar into my system. Whereas when I have a fizzy drink, or that can have eight teaspoons of sugar or jarred processed sauces that have up to 20 something teaspoons of sugar. When I have those things in my diet, I get, suddenly my pancreas has to produce this really large amount of insulin and what's stored is normally stored as fat. And what eventually happens from a period of when we get to our 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, along the life course, if we have a frequent consumption, and frequency is the word there, um, a frequent consumption of these things um, coupled with exercise and you know, a lot of different things happening in our life. And um, eventually what happens is we become insulin resistant. So we have all these processed things too regularly, the insulin's produced and it has no effect on our body. And then we have a high blood sugar and it damages everything from our, our mouths to our feet, to our, you know, to our hands. We were involved with a, in the National Rehabilitation Hospital with D-Care in a project. And we went and we looked, we did an oral healthcare project actually with them. And um, to, see the, to see the amputations of so many young people, their hands, their limbs, their legs, it was so, so really brought it home to what, you know, what, what, what are, what the, how the diet has changed and, and how it's leading to these kind of complications. Again, the dental side of things, just again, not forgetting, we talk a lot about wellness about our bodies, but also our mouths are very important. We use it to eat, speak, and um, it's there for appearance every day, you know, it's there for self-esteem, it's linked to mental health, and yet the streptococcus mutants, the, the bacteria that live in our mouth, the sugar is a food source. We have things like fluoride added to our water, less than one part per million as a public health measure. We have, you know, um, topical fluorides, we brush our teeth, but also we need to watch this guy, the sugar. This is 25 teaspoons of sugar here, what you're seeing. And again, we'd never ever in a month of Sundays kind of consume this type of sugar, but yet it's hidden and processed in lots of different things. So much so that the sugar has become the silent epidemic. It's something that has been there for years and it's only in the last kind of, um, it's been there for about probably uh, two decades. And in the last few years, we've really become more health literate and we're really kind of shining a light on, okay, what, 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 what's, what's in what I'm eating? And, you know, is this, you know, what, what, what is it full of fat? Is it full of sugar? What, what am I eating? So we call this the sugar wars. And what I'd say to you is, to give you an example of this, 74% of packaged and processed foods in our supermarket, we don't need. Visualize when you actually go into a supermarket, the next time you actually pick up your trolley or your basket, when you're standing there, apart from your fruit and veg section, your meat section, and your cosmetic and your toilet rolls and everything like that, 74% um, of that supermarket is marketing and sales and things that are put in front of you with all the offers. Uh, millions of euros goes behind that sort of advertising to get us to buy those products. 
and just be a little bit more mindful the next time you're there because a lot of them are very 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 high in sugar and that's having an effect on our body it's addictive it affects our mental health it's affecting our bmi it's affecting our you know it's leading to a lot of those adult chronic diseases some of the high sugars in in juices but also things that we put in we, we for dinner we cut up chicken meat veg and then suddenly we can empty a sauce that has 20 something teaspoons of sugar or we have you know things that are marketed natural no artificial colors no artificial flavors but again that's so so high in sugar so we need to watch we're kind of being false laid with with packaging and advertising we really need to be a little bit more aware of of what we're putting into our systems how much sugar is okay? So the World Oral Health Organization is actually from last year, um, kind of in the last 18 months, has kind of really limited that half their sugar consumption due to the amount of adult chronic disease that's out there. So we say six teaspoons for most for men and women and three to six for kids. And that's your breakfast, lunch, dinner, and that's processed sugar. These all these added sugars that we kind of want to avoid. A lot of people ask the question, is fruit bad for you? Fruit is actually really good for you because it has fiber and slowly releases it into our systems. But fruit reduces the risk for diabetes while fruit juice and smoothies increases our diabetes risk. The reason that is, is because the fiber is broken down in the blitzing. And when we buy processed and um, you know re easy ready juices and a lot of those things, it's often um, sugar is added to preserve the product. So th there's that side to it as well. We need to be very mindful of labels. And the types of sugars that we should be looking for, it's not the devil by any means, but what we want to look at are, we want to avoid extrinsic sugars. The one you see here on the left of the diagram, things that are externally added to products. We're looking at things like, for example, processed cereals, 30 grams of cereal here, and we're talking maybe five, um, five teaspoons per 30 grams. On average, when we actually pour a box of these, we pour two to three times as much. So for your kids or for yourself, that could be up to 15 teaspoons before we touch lunch, dinner, and um, snacks in between. A heavy, heavy source of extra calories and very low nutrients. So those extra, extra sugars we want to avoid, that's 74% of our supermarket makeup. We want to have intrinsic sugars. So everything you see there in that diagram, fruits, vegetables, all of those different things. Veg is quite low in sugar, but a lot of the fruits has fiber, slowly releases into our system to give us energy. We want to kind of consume our diet with a lot of those, you know, with a lot of those intrinsic natural sugars. To look out for sugar, beware of the names. When it says ingredients on a label, look to the close, look to the, to the back of the pack. It normally will have the oses, sucrose, glucose, lactose, galactose, and watch out a lot of them supermarkets now and a lot of manufacturers are using words like honey and maple, kind of more natural words. They're still sugars. The best way to calculate it is go to the back of the label and look at carbohydrates of sugars and 4.2 is an actual teaspoon of sugar. So just divide four into the carbohydrates of sugars on the back of the label and just be careful. Sometimes it gives per, per the whole product or it will give per quarter of the pack or per 100 grams as shown there. So just divide four in and that will give you the teaspoons per pack. And if you can't do that, just look, is it close to the beginning of the label and you see all the oses, you'd normally know it's high in sugar. Generally, something that has a long shelf life that's in your press, that's actually you know, quite processed, has a long shelf life, it's full of sugar, full of salt or full of both. So we want to be aware of those kind of items. Again, a healthy diet, just to sum up, it promotes good health and well-being, it decreases infections and diseases, boosts our immune system, it's there for, you know, controls our weight, keeps us mentally fit, and also our appearance, our hair, skin, and nails. A lot of companies and a lot of areas are going into the, you know, we have our healthy food pyramid, but the healthy eating plan, it's very easy to follow for meals. It, it involves eating the right types of food and eating the right quantity of food. We're looking at a half our plate should be fruit and vegetables, a palm size of protein for meat and a matchbox size of dairy, eight to 10 glasses um, of water a day and healthy oils and a whole 30 minutes of staying active as well that we can try and feed into our diet. So to sum up, sugar is, is you know, there's two different sides to it. We want natural sugars that are actually um, you know, not the extrinsic that are added, but the intrinsic ones that are naturally present with fiber in, 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 in our foods. And um, we want to be aware that sugar in large processed amounts can cause harm, not just to our oral health, but to our whole overall general health. 
um, and we want to look at things like just some key messages there look for whole grains you know have a meat-free day matchbox size of cheese palm size of protein in our meals avoiding the oils with the biscuits sweets cakes high in sugar high in fat and again they're contributing to obesity which is leading to a lot of these conditions and again, that 30 minute exercise and that little bit of resistance that we can have every day in our lives. Small everyday changes will, you know, we're as human, we're creatures of habit. By cutting out one fizzy drink that is eight teaspoons of sugar over five days, over a month, over three months, over six months, it equals a big change. What we do every day, so not never have these things, frequency, have them in moderation. It's small everyday changes that really, really make the difference. So just to sum up there, um, on our website, our wellness website is wellness.dcare.ie and our insurance website is dcaredental.ie. And we look forward to, um, if you have any questions or anything, please get in touch or leave a, a, a link below when I get back to you. Thanks so much.